In the English county of Norfolk lies a hidden gem. It's a place that is rarely open to the public and yet is home to one of the country's most famous ghosts, the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall. Raynham Hall is a private family home and has been the seat of the Townshend family for nearly 400 years. The estate once covered 7,000 acres and contains the first seven miles of the Wensum River. The hall gives its name to five estate villages known as the Raynhams. Construction on the home itself began in 1619 but it soon stalled. After a large amount of Ketton stone had accumulated on the site, building work started again in 1622. The hall was one of the first of its kind, having been inspired by European architecture, and architect Inigo Jones is believed to have been involved in its design. The hall had been commissioned by Sir Roger Townshend, but he didn't live to see the finished version of his home. By the time of his death in 1637, the majority of the house had been built, but some of the rooms hadn't been fitted out. As with many grand houses, the hall was later extended and the interiors altered. Much of the interior decoration still seen today is thought to be the work of William Kent, who once painted coaches before turning to interior design. Kent is responsible for the elaborate doorways, carved chimney, mosaic paintings and the ceiling in the marble hall. So impressive was the hall that King Charles II once stayed there. Today the hall sometimes hosts music recitals and private tours which are guided by the 8th Marquis Charles Townshend and his wife Alice. Raynham Hall held its first public open day in 2017. Our story, however, is most concerned with two 18th century residents of Raynham Hall. A husband and wife, to be more precise. It's a story filled with truth and lies, and shows how one woman became the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall. Charles Townshend was born on the 18th of April, 1674. Later on in life, Charles became the leader of Parliament's The House of Lords, and history would credit him as being the man who invented crop rotation in Britain. Charles also had an unusual nickname that was linked to his invention. Charles introduced turnips as a winter fodder crop for cattle, and this led to him being called Turnip. Charles's future wife, Dorothy, was born on the 18th of September, 1686. Dorothy was the sister of the man who would become Britain's first Prime Minister, Sir Robert Walpole, and aunt of writer and politician Horace Walpole. Dorothy was only about 10 or 11 years old when Charles asked her father for Dorothy's hand in marriage. At that point in time, it was common for people to marry young. But because Charles was his guardian, Dorothy's father refused to allow his daughter to marry Charles, thinking that it would look like he was using his guardianship for personal gain. Instead, Charles married Elizabeth Pelham and they had children, five of which survived. After Elizabeth died in 1711, Dorothy came back into Charles's life and they married at Raynham Hall in 1713. They had seven children together and six of them survived. According to the current Lord of Raynham Hall's father, documents and medical reports found in the 1960s suggested that Dorothy lived a happy life and was much loved. It's likely that Dorothy died at the Hall of Smallpox on the 29th of March, 1726. But legend tells a different story. The story goes that before she married Charles, Dorothy had an affair with Lord Wharton. When Charles found out, he was furious and locked Dorothy in a room at the hall. 
he forbid her from seeing her children. It was in that room that Dorothy died of smallpox in 1726. Another version of the tale says that Dorothy died from a broken neck after falling, or being pushed, down the stairs. In death, Dorothy did not rest peacefully and she returned to Raynham Hall as the Brown Lady. The Brown Lady first made an appearance at a Christmas party held in 1835. Raynham Hall was hosting many guests and after playing chess one evening, a group of male guests decided it was time for bed. As they made their way to their rooms, the men saw the outline of a woman wearing an out-of-date brown dress, standing in a doorway. She vanished before their eyes. But it was the sighting of the same woman the next night that caused some of the staff to immediately quit their jobs, once told about the sighting. Colonel Loftus, who had seen the woman the previous night, had the misfortune of coming across her again. She appeared to be a genteel, aristocratic woman, at least until Colonel Loftus noticed one particular detail. Her eyes had been gouged out. The next year, the brown lady was spotted again. Author and Royal Navy Captain Frederick Marriott was staying at Raynham as part of a hunting party. He'd heard all about the sightings of the Brown Lady the previous year and wanted to prove that the haunting was nonsense. His theory was that the ghost was nothing but a trick by local smugglers to keep strangers away. Captain Marriott asked to stay in the bedroom that contained a painting of the woman Colonel Loftus had encountered. He even kept a gun under his pillow, just in case, but the first two nights crept by without any sign of a haunting. As the captain was getting ready for bed on the third night, two of the guests stopped by his room to ask his opinion on a new gun that came from London. Captain Marriott agreed to take a look, and the men headed towards the room down the other end of the corridor. The captain took his own gun with him, telling the men that they might need it if they were to meet the brown lady. After inspecting the gun, the two men decided to accompany the captain back to his room, joking that he needed to be protected. As they walked down the corridor, they saw a woman holding a light approaching. This alarmed Captain Marriott, who, wearing only a shirt and trousers, was considered to be in a state of undress. Captain Marriott thought the woman was a female guest, and, not wanting his lack of clothing to shock her, he hid in a space between the double doors of one of the bedrooms. The other men joined him. But as she got closer, Captain Marriott realised that the woman was identical to the woman in the portrait kept in his room. With his gun in his hand, the captain began to demand an explanation. Words began to fail him, however, when the woman stopped, turned towards him and, quote, grinned in a malicious and diabolical manner, end quote. Captain Marriott thought that a reasonable response to this was to fire his gun at the woman, who disappeared as soon as the gun was fired. The bullet was later found in a door. The brown lady would often appear as people were heading to bed, and people sometimes woke up during the night to find her standing in their rooms. But it seems that the spectre also served another purpose. Rather than just scaring residents and guests silly during the darkest hours, she also served as a warning. An appearance by her meant that a tragedy was about to happen. On one particular evening, a dinner party was being held when many guests saw a woman wearing a brown dress walking through the room. She didn't recognise anyone and quickly vanished. The next morning, the Townsend family received word that George Walpole, a relative of Dorothy's, had died. George passed away at roughly the same time that the brown lady was seen. 
1926 brought another sighting of the brown lady, this time on the staircase. She was seen by the then Lady Townshend and her son. But it was an appearance by the brown lady ten years later that is the most well known and it's an account that continues to be debated today. The date was the 19th of September 1936. Captain Hubert C. Provand and his assistant, Indre Shearer, were at the hall to take pictures for Country Life magazine. The pair had just finished photographing the staircase when Shearer noticed a mist descending the stairs that then took the shape of a woman. Shearer told Captain Provand to quickly take another photograph. They captured the image you see on screen now. Speaking about the incident, Shearer said, Captain Provan took one photograph while I flashed the light. He was focusing for another exposure. I was standing by his side just behind the camera with the flashlight pistol in my hand, looking directly up the staircase. All at once I detected an ethereal veiled form coming slowly down the stairs. Rather excitedly, I called out sharply, Quick, quick, there's something! I pressed the trigger of the flashlight pistol. After the flash and on closing the shutter, Captain Provand removed the focusing cloth from his head and turning to me said, What's all the excitement about? The photograph first appeared in the 26th of December 1936 edition of Country Life magazine and the negative is still kept in the magazine's archives. Famous paranormal investigator Harry Price interviewed Captain Provand and Shearer and felt confident that the duo spoke the truth, adding that the negative contained the figure. The photograph has been analysed many times and theories have been put forward with regards to what the figure might actually be. Did Captain Provand and Indre Shearer smear grease on the negative? Was it double exposure? Was a real person captured during the exposure and light got into the camera? Magician John Booth argued that the photo could be duplicated easily. At the Magic Castle in Hollywood, Booth had magician Ron Wilson cover himself in a sheet and descend the staircase as a photo was taken. The image looked similar to the original brown lady picture. Investigators John Fairley and Simon Welfare have argued that a pale line above each stair tread indicates that one photo has been superimposed over another. Those who agree with this theory say that the figure looks like a standard Virgin Mary statue and that if you look closely, you can see the hands clasped in prayer, that the dress is typical of the V-shaped garments carved in these statues and that the pedestal is noticeable. The ghostly woman has been seen less frequently since the photograph was taken. What do you think? Is the photograph a fake? Or did Dorothy Townshend really become the brown lady of Raynham Hall? <laughs>